Hello everyone, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. And what do we got on the cards for today? Well, I thought today I'd do part two of the Orange HRM um, series that I have uh, already started in part one. So if you haven't watched the part one video, you need to watch that before watching this one. And in this particular video, what I'm going to do is switch over to the uh, HRM, the Orange HRM application which is a Docker container application running on bare metal, not on the uh, Ubuntu virtual machine that I had in part one. Uh, to access that, let me go ahead and show you how I do it. I've got Nginx Proxy Manager set up, and that's a great little application too, by the way. It runs in Portainer on my uh, desktop computer. Actually, the application itself runs on a Raspberry Pi, but I access it via the desktop computer. And so I've got like eight different uh, uh, container apps that I control in uh, Nginx Proxy Manager. And what that does is it allows me to set this up as a, uh, a subdomain of the domain that I own, which is dancalloy.com. And by virtue of the fact that I can do that with Nginx Proxy Manager, I can also uh, encrypt it with a, a Let's Encrypt uh, SSL certificate to make it secure. So here's the particular one that I've done. It's uh, again HTTP 192.168.1.243. That's the server that I have Orange HRM running on. And uh, I have it Let's Encrypt encrypted. It is public so you can access it via the web. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on the Orange HRM and that takes you to the actual site which is uh, secure alright and <clears throat> so here's the login screen and the company that I have set up in here is different from the one I showed you in part one this is called CRW Incorporated it stands for Callaway Remote Workers so <laughs> this is a fictitious company and uh, everything about it is fictitious I don't own this company and uh, I don't have employees working for me but I started playing around with this application and just went wild with it. So it's it's great. This is an application, though, it's for the serious user, uh, open source. If you own a small business, you can definitely run your small business, uh, manage your people uh, using uh, this application. Uh, very easy to set up, very easy to uh, manage and configure. So let's go ahead and log in. I'm going to log in as Orange HRM Admin. And so when I click on that, I've got RoboForm doing all the password management for me, which is nice. This is the admin interface for Orange HRM, and I configured the, uh, uh, you know, everything about this. I'll show you how I did it here in a moment, but um, I'm not punched in, which means, you know, I've got a time clock set up here, uh, but I'm the president of the company, and I've got 15 or 14 workers that are working for me. So altogether, 15 employees, including myself. And this is the dashboard you're looking at right now. It's got things on it like time at work, my actions, a quick launch of like a sign leave, leave list, apply leave. So when an employee applies for leave, I can take a look at the leave list and see who's applied. Of course, the uh, managers of those employees would be the one to approve or disapprove their leave. But I can monitor that. And I can even look at my own leave here, obviously. Uh, and I can apply for leave here uh, using this button. Buzz latest posts. Uh, this is the uh, forum interface within Orange HRM. Yes, it does have an internal forum of sorts uh, that uh, you can post uh, announcements, or I can, or uh, one of the managers can can do that as well. Um, I can take a look at employees that are on leave today and see who's here, who's not here. Um, this particular aspect, employee distribution by subunit, I must not be using it properly because I have set up subunits, but it doesn't seem to be picking those up, so I'll have to investigate that further. I'm sure it's something I'm doing wrong, So, um, but that's not working now. However, this is working. Employee distribution by location, I've got different locations, East Coast U.S., Midwest U.S., uh, North Mariana Islands. Southeast U.S., West Coast U.S., and, of course, unassigned. Uh, and so that's the, the dashboard functionality here. Um, quick and dirty look at that. So let's go up to the admin. So if I go to the admin, 
I've got several sections here, user management, job, organization, qualifications, nationalities, corporate branding, and configuration. Now, under user management, if I click the down arrow, uh, I've got users. And so with my users, I've got them set up here. I've got 15 records. Now, this is running on a MariaDB database, which is controlling all of this, the aspects of this, keeping a very tight control of of every aspect of uh, Orange HRM. I really like it. The user roles here I've got set up for everybody. Uh, there are more than just the ESS, but uh, I've got ESS roles set up for everyone. That means employee self-service, okay? And then I've got the employees' names here. And uh, this is myself. And then I've got uh, Claudia Collins, Deborah Schulman, Herman Jackson, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the enabled status means they have access to log in to the uh, system from any, um, since this is accessible via the web, they can log in using this website, orangehrm.dancalloway.com, and they can log in to their accounts um, using, uh, you know, their username and password that was assigned to them. Then they have their ability to change their password. All right, so under job, Let's go and take a look at that. I've got job titles. So if you click on the job titles, you can see we've got an administrative assistant, chief executive officer, chief financial officer, the chief operations officer, uh, finance assistant, finance director, graphic designer, marketing assistant, marketing director, president, and that's, my, that's me, uh, programmer, project designer, project manager, and uh, public affairs officer and a vice president. So all of these people have been assigned those roles and they're assigned by name. So if I click on the finance director, uh, you know, when I show you that part of it, you'll see that uh, who the finance director is and you can see who works for that person and who that person works for, you know, who, they're, uh, who they report to. All right, so under job here, I've got, uh, in addition to job titles, I've got pay grades. So this is the ability that you have within Orange HRM. So it's it, you can run this, run your entire company off of this uh, open source application. It's really wonderful. So what I've done is I've set up four pay grades. I've got pay grade one, two, three, and four. They're all paid in U.S. dollar uh, currencies, okay? And uh, they all uh, have certain limitations, uh, strata or ranges, if you will, for pay grade one through pay grade four. And so if I click on the uh, correction here, you can see here the minimum salary for pay grade one is $95,001 per year. And then the maximum salary is $125,000 per year. Okay, you can add additional currencies. You can also add additional pay grades. All right, so let's uh, look again at pay grades and go down to pay grade four. You can see with pay grade four, it drops to a salary range of a minimum of $20,001 to a maximum of $35,000, okay? Let's go back to employment status. And so different employment statuses I have is four records in here. I've got contract workers, full-time workers, part-time workers, and temporary seasonal. I actually, for this particular company, I've only got full-time and part-time. I don't have any contract workers nor do I have temporary seasonal, but I've set those up just in case one of those gets hired on, okay? Um, for job, and now you do that through the add functionality. And so if I were to add a, another particular uh, employment status, I would put that employment status here and save it. So I'm not gonna do that, no, let's cancel out. All right, for job, uh, now I've got job categories. And for the categories, I've got nine records, craft workers, laborers and helpers, office and clerical workers, officials and managers, and these are all my managers, um, operatives, professionals, these are like programmer, uh, project designer, that kind of stuff, sales workers, I don't have any of those, uh, service workers, and technicians, okay? And then for uh, work shifts, I've got full-time workers work from nine to five, and they work eight-hour days. And then part-time workers are nine to two, and uh, they work five hours, so they don't work 40-hour a week. Under organization, um, 
I've got general information under the organization. And so this is the general information that's filled out for the actual organization itself. And then under locations, I told you that I had uh, East Coast, Midwest, North Central, Northeast, uh, Northern Mariana Islands. Yes, I've got one worker who works. It's a U.S. territory, but that individual, it's a, a she, a female, works in the Northern Mariana Islands um, because they're all uh, they're all uh, outside workers. You know, they're uh, ESS workers, and they all are remote workers, so they don't work at the home location. Northwest, U.S., South Central, Southeast, uh, Southwest, and West Coast. Okay, don't have every every employee doesn't fit every one of these categories, but they potentially could be. Since I've only got 11 records, I've got uh, 14 employees other than myself. Obviously, there's some categories here that have not been touched. All right, for organization two, I've also got structure, and under this, I've set this up, and you can do that. You can turn the edit on so that you can modify this and you can add. Uh, a particular structure. I'm going to turn the edit off so I don't mess around with it. But here's the company name, CRW Incorporated. And there I am as president. Underneath, I've got vice president. And underneath that, I've got public affairs officer and administrative assistant. Now, the reason these two are underneath the vice president, but they're also underneath the president, is they have a double role. They, The public affairs officer reports both to the vice president and president and the administrative assistant, uh, i.e. secretary um, of sorts, reports to both as well. So serves as the secretary for the president and vice president. Underneath the vice president, if you toggle that down, the vice president got the CEO, CFO, and COO that report to the vice president specifically. All right, and underneath the CEO, I've got a marketing director that reports to the CEO, and I've got a marketing assistant that reports to the marketing directory. Now, the cool thing about this Orange HRM is, is if you have a subordinate worker, uh, somebody that reports, so if I have a marketing director and I have that person reporting to the CEO, when I set that up in the system so the marketing director reports to uh, the CEO, it automatically has that marketing director as a subordinate of the CEO. Uh, you don't have to go in and say, okay, well, if this guy reports to him, then I have to set up this guy being a subordinate of him. You don't have to do that, which is really cool. Cuts down on the amount of work you have to do here. For the CFO, Chief Financial Officer, uh, I've got a finance director that reports to that person. And then underneath that finance director, I've got a, a finance assistant. All right, so that finance assistant reports directly to the finance director, okay? And, um, and then I've got the finance director reporting directly to the CFO, Finance directors does not report directly to the vice president or to myself. Uh, for the COO, I've got a project manager, and then underneath the project manager, I've got three employees with three job titles. I've got a project designer, a programmer, and a graphic designer that report to the project manager, who then reports to the COO. Okay, and then I've got public affairs and administrative assistant, as I mentioned earlier. All right, so for qualifications, and this is an area I haven't touched much on yet, uh, but you've got the ability to set up various skill levels, okay? And then you've got um, education that you can do. So I've got doctoral, graduate, high school, and postgraduate level education. I've got, uh, and the reason for that is uh, for promotions, and for licenses and things of that sort. So here under licenses, I don't have anything set up yet. So no one that's working for me in this fictitious company currently requires a license, although that it's possible in the future that I will set that up. I'm going to play around this more. Languages, I've got uh, English, French, German, and Spanish speaking people, or could potentially, and traditional Chinese. All right, so I've got those set up. I can add more if I want to by just clicking the add button and adding those. All right, so for uh, memberships, uh, individuals may belong to professional organizations or members of particular professional organizations, such as ACM, uh, AMA, the American Marketing Association. Uh, I've got uh, an employee who belongs to the American Marketing Association. The Academy of Management, all of my CFO, CEO, and COO are members of the Academy of Management. 
That was a requirement for uh, their hire. And then Association of Science and Technology, Association of Women in Computing, CompTIA, IEEE, and on and on, okay? My programmer, for instance, uh, belongs to the Python Software Foundation. All right, so for nationalities here, I've got 14 records, 193 records, rather, of different nationalities. That was built into the system already. Uh, Under corporate branding, uh, as an admin, I can go in and change the primary color, and I did that. This was all orange. I changed the primary color to blue, so I've got some blue in here, as you can see. And then I've got a primary graduate color, which is what you see here. And then a secondary color is red, and a primary uh, graduate color, uh, g- not graduate, gradient, sorry, gradient color is this one here, and I don't have any uh, secondary font colors or primary font colors. I've got some logos, so I've got the client logo up here, which is, uh, and I've got that at Keep Current. I've got a client banner, and uh, that's out on the, uh, uh, client banner is out on the, the client side. And then the login banner is the login thing that you saw when you when you uh, we started the video, and that's the CRW logo right here, CRW logo banner, and uh, and I can change that. So as time goes on, it might change, and so I can change that as well. And then uh, so what I do is if I want to reset everything, I just reset to default. If I want to preview what it looks like, I can preview it here, and I can publish if I make changes. All right, so let's move away from the admin side now. Well, actually, configuration, I've got one other thing. I don't haven't touched much of this, and the reason for that is is I don't have the ability here at home to set up email configuration because I'm on a, a residential account with my ISP, and so I can't set up a mail server and do the, the nice things I could do if I had a, you know, if I had this thing out on an... Uh, a DigitalOcean account, uh, virtual server, P- you know, VPS, or if I had it on Linode or something like that, then I could set up the email configuration. It's very difficult to set that up these days because you've got a lot of requirements now with controls in place to uh, prevent spamming. Uh, so it requires you to do a lot of work to set this up properly. All right, so let's go over here to the next section, which is a PIM, which is Personnel Information Management. And if I set up, P, click on the PIM, I can go over here to configuration. I can set up optional fields, custom fields, data imports, reporting me- methods, and uh, termination reasons. So reporting methods here are direct or indirect reporting. Some re- employees report directly to their supervisor. Some report indirectly to others. So I've got that ability set up in here as well. Uh, for termination reasons, I've got some termination reasons set up. So if I terminate an employee, it might be for a contract not renewed or deceased or laid off or physically disabled and compensated. You know, it could be that the individual resigned because the company requested that they resign or they retired, you know, different reasons for resignation or termination as it's now called in HRM world. Here's the employee list. And so I've got 15 records, including myself. And so here are all the job titles, the employment statuses, um, and then the supervisors that they work for. So for instance, um, let's look at Deborah W. Schulman here, CEO. She works for Opal Panos, who's the vice president of the company. And uh, so if I come down to the vice president, that's Opal W. Panos, and uh, she works for me. And so I'm the president, so she works for me, reports directly to me. And so here are the employee numbers as they were hired on. And so I was the first one to show up in the company. And let's see, number two was Kendall Cornell, the project manager. It's his first first time, full-time hire, and um, and, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the full employee list. And you can search for an employee here by just typing in their name. Or, and if, as you start typing here, so for instance, if I type in Deborah, it's going to fill that, and so Deborah W. Schulman would uh, search for her, and then she would show up down here. Now, Deborah is showing up and up here, okay, and then down here are three records, and these three records are people that work for her, okay, that report to her. All right, and so 
let's move on to the add employees. So if I add an employee, so if one gets hired, I can come in here and I can uh, put in their first name or somebody else can do it. First name, middle name, last name. I can put, there's their automatic uh, employee ID number gets incremented. So I've got 15 employees now. So the next number is 16. And uh, if I want to create their login details, I can click that button, put in their username. I can enable or disable that functionality right there. And so I can then put in their password. And I normally use RoboForm for that purpose. Come up here and use the, the generator, the password generator for taking care of that. And then confirming it so I don't have to remember it. So each of my employees here in this particular interface, since this is publicly accessible, each one of these employees has a very uh, uh, strong password set up through RoboForm. 15 characters, uppercase, lowercase, letters, numbers, and special characters. So nobody's going to be able to hack into it, hopefully. And then once I set that up, then I can save that employee. I can also add their, their picture here. Now, something I didn't show you um, let's go back to employee list and see if I can show this to you. Uh, for like Claudia M. Collins, for instance, here's Claudia Collins, and uh, you may be wondering, where did I get her picture? Okay, and where I got her picture was through AI. This is an AI generated image of Claudia Collins, and none of these are real people, these are people that have been fabricated by artificial intelligence. And uh, the details that I have for Claudia M. Collins, for instance, employee number 15, I can put her driver's license number in and expiry date. I didn't bother to do that, but she's an American. Uh, she is married, and I can change that to either married or single or other. Um, date of birth, and uh, I, I did not put this in myself. This was generated by another application that I have called a fake name generator. So all of this got generated through a fake name generator. So none of this information is uh, real. And so she is female, obviously. And so this is how all that information got put in. Now, contact details, you know, here's her street address, 4220 Carson Street, San Diego, California, 92111. Here's her home phone number. All that information was provided by the fake name generator. I didn't have to make any of that up. I did make this up, the work email address, the, that email address for every employee by convention is a first name dot last name at crwincorporated.com, okay? And, um, and so each one of those can log in and use that email address. All right, so emergency contacts, for instance, Richard Collins is her husband. Here's his number. If we need to contact him, if something happens to her, and she's hospitalized or incapacitated or, you know, heaven forbid, deceased on the job. Um, dependents, I haven't filled any of this information out for any of my employees. Immigration records here are there as well. You have that ability in Orange HRM, which is nice. Uh, her job, so here's her job title. She's the CFO of the company. She joined us on 2-8-2023. She's under the job category of officials and managers. She is a full-time employee, and um, she's not a contract worker, so I don't have to fill any contract details for her. Her salary, and if I click on that button, she gets uh, she's pay grade one, and her salary is $125,000 a year, U.S. dollars. She gets paid monthly, and her paycheck of $10,416.67 gets direct deposited into her account. She also gets an annual bonus of $35,000 as CF, as the, uh, uh, you know, CFO of this company, all right, or CEO, rather. All right, so let's go on down to report to. So she reports to Opal Panos as the vice president, and that reporting method is direct, all right, and then she has someone who's working for her, uh, Ramona Koch, who reports directly to um, to uh, uh, Claudia Collins as well. And that was all set up in the system here. All right, so qualifications. Um, I haven't added work experience or education or skills or any of that here. Um, I haven't had time to set all of that up for each employee. It's a lot of work. 
And uh, I just wanted enough to show you what I've done here. So for memberships, though, I think I did go in here and put her in as uh, a member of the Academy of Management, which was, as I mentioned earlier, a requirement for employment. All right, and so let's move on. So if I want to add an employee, as I mentioned, that's how I do it. If I want to generate any reports, uh, I can do that. So a PIM sample report here. Um, I can either go over and this particular button, I'm not quite sure what that is. I'd have to investigate that. But there appears to be a PIM sample report, and you can set up um, personnel information management reports, and you can generate those by just clicking the Add button and telling the system what it is you want to do, what records you want to fields you want to display, uh, what selection criteria you want to use, you know, do you want to generate a pay grade report, an education report, an employment status report, uh, a report on service period, when they joined, their language, age group, all of that, okay? And uh, so that's all built into the system, and it's very nice. All right, so part of RNJHRM is you have the ability to set up leave for uh, each employee. Each employee has the ability to uh, apply for leave. They have leave balances, uh, and they have various types of leave. And so let's look at entitlements first so that you get an idea of what that is. So I added the entitlements for every employee, and there are different types of leave types. And so what I did was I set up family medical, funeral, sick, and vacation. And for family medical, they get 10 days. Uh, I mean, for vacation, they get 10 days of vacation leave. For family medical, I think they get um, five days, or is it 10? Uh, I can't remember. Funeral, they get three days of funeral leave, and then each employee gets five days of sick, okay? And the leave period begins on January 1, and it ends on December 31st. Um, and then you can put in the individual's name here. So um, what I normally do is set up multiple employee, and so what I do it by location. So I come in here, and so for instance, for uh, southeast or southwest or west coast, and go in here and uh, set up subunits. I've got one employee that matches the west coast, all right, and the leave types I can set up here as well, all right. And so for funeral, for instance, uh, if I save that, then you know I can set that up for that one matching employee. All right, so for my leave, I can go in here and I can request leave and I can apply for it and I can take a look at what I have available. All right, so for reports to, I've got, uh, or reports rather, I've got leave entitlement and usage report and I've got a my leave entitlement and usage report. For configuration, I've got leave periods, leave types. So for leave types, I showed you those. And then for work week, I've got work week starts on a Monday, ends on a Friday, and then I've got Saturday and Sunday as non-working days. Um, and then for holidays, I've got all the holidays in here. New Year's Day, Martin Luther King Day, President's Day, Independence Day, Juneteenth, Columbus Day, etc., Veterans Day. All of those are in there. These are federal holidays, and they're entitled, each employee is entitled to the day off on those days and so uh, this keeps me straight on uh, if a person requests leave over that holiday or if they uh, want to work over that holiday it's a federal holiday they can't do that leave list okay and so this is the leave list for uh, employees and then I can assign leave here for subordinates etc if I want to do that um, and I've done that already so each employee has 14 days a vacation leave for instance and then by leave type um, so for vacation leave you know they have assigned leave that you can set up in days here okay um, let's go down to time and so for time I'm, I'm gonna pass over this because I haven't done anything in this uh, I would can tell you that the first day of the week is a Monday and so you've got you know Sunday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and then Friday Saturday Okay, as well. And then for recruitment, I haven't done anything in that either, but you can uh, look at candidates that you have 
for various uh, vacancies that you might have. I haven't done anything with this, but that capability is there. The hiring manager, you can assign a hiring manager for a certain vacancy for a particular job title you might have. So if a vacancy does come up, you can do a hiring manager and assign that particular role to an individual and, um, and let them recruit that individual in for hire. All right, so for my info, I've got my all my details here for performance. Um, I can look at employee reviews that I, I'm required to do in the company for the people that work directly for me. And then each individual employee manager has that ability to go in and log in. This is available to them so that they can do employee reviews of the people that fall under them in the company. Got the dashboard, I already showed you that, and the directory. Here's the directory of everybody that's in the company. And so I've got 15 records. So I've got uh, Kendall Carnell, Claudia Collins, Sandra, or Sandra, Jamie, Norma, Joseph, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Uh, 15 employees, Catherine Whittington. If I click on that, it's gonna tell me which location she falls into, what her job title is. She's our, our marketing director. And uh, here's our work email right there. All right. This is the maintenance functionality. That's uh, only an admin can get in here. There's a warning about that uh, because you can do considerable damage to the system if you don't know what you're doing. And then here's the buzz section. So this is, uh, you know, anniversaries. One year anniversary for upcoming is Willie O'Neill and Jamie Jackson. So. We can put that in a BuzzFeed and generate that, share photos, share videos, do all kinds of stuff. This is a really neat system, Orange HRM. I'm really uh, happy with it. Um, and uh, if you own a small business and you want to look at using an open source uh, application to run your small business to manage your people, this is definitely one you can take a look at and potentially uh, take advantage of. All right, so I'm going to log out as me now and log in as one of the employees. And so I'm going to come in. So all the employees, when they log in, when they access the system here at orangehrm.dancalloway.com, will be presented with this login screen. And so when I come over, they can come over and they would log in. So let's log, let uh, Opal Panos, the vice president, log in. Now, Opal Panos does not have administrative privileges over the entire system. That's only something I can do. I'm the administrator, one and only. Um, don't even believe I have the ability to assign Opal administrative privileges. I could be wrong about that. But uh, but anyway, she sees something a little bit different than what I would see. She doesn't see admin, for instance. Uh, she doesn't see maintenance, for instance. Okay, so she can't get in and run maintenance on the system. But she can do things like personal information management, manage leave, especially leave for herself and for her subordinates. Um and so let's see if under the leave section, um, if she looks at the leave list, there's nobody in the under her that has is taken leave, or is uh, applying for leave. Uh, but here she would do the apply for leave. She would click on apply. She would put in the type of leave that she wants. So if, for instance, if she was looking at taking a vacation, she's got seven days left. So she has seven days this year that um, she's already uh, either applied for and it's been approved or she's already used it, okay? Uh, for family medical, she's got 10 days of family medical leave. She, she, she hasn't used any fa family medical leave this year. Um, if she wanted to look at performance that had been done on her, she has access to this and no other employee uh, other than Opal Panos can see this, all right? so. That's, this is the kind of stuff that you can run. I'm not going to go into any more detail here because this is a kind of a long uh, video as already for part two. But everybody has the ability to change their password. They can get support. Uh, they can look at the about here and they can log out, log back in at will. All right, so this has been a short, well, no, it may not be so short, but a uh, preview of... Um, the uh, part two here for looking at a company called CRW from Orange HRM, setting it up as a secure site so that uh, workers in their remote locations can access this uh, uh, application uh, from their location via the web 
and uh, get in and do what they need to do to manage their people and uh, apply for leave and, and do all kinds of stuff. Hope you enjoyed that. If you if you thought this was useful, please uh, click the uh, thumbs up down below. That helps my channel. And if you haven't subscribed to me yet, go ahead and subscribe to me. I have over 300 videos that I've generated so far. Uh, I've got about one and a half thousand uh, subscribers. It's not n anywhere near what I'd like, but uh, I've been doing this for a few years. And so anyway, this is Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.